Lisa and I met back in 2010, right at the beginning of 2010. Um, I think right before or right after my first baby was born. We went out to dinner. We brought Nala with us in our little thing. She slept through the whole dinner. <coughs> she, I don't think she's ever been quiet since. <laughs> um, and uh, Lisa's been over to my place. <coughs> we have been over to Lisa's house a couple times, several times. We went up and hung out at Jack Canfield's house together. Spent, um, we got to mastermind at Jack's house. That was really fun. Uh, uh, Mari Smith. Any of you guys know Mar who Mari Smith is? Mari Smith's longtime friend, and Mari introduced us, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. And over the years, um, not only have we become great friends, we've promoted each other to our lists, and now we know that I've become very, very selective on who I'll promote to my list. She's one of the very few people that make the cut. And she's definitely one of the very few people who will make the cut to be here in one of my events. Lisa, Lisa teaches how to boost your sales using irresistible offers. She um, started out her business, I don't know, 2008, 2009, something like that, and quickly grew it to over a million, and I think last couple of years has been doing over five million a year. Yeah, she just works from home. Small little team. So... She knows what the hell she's talking about. Please, uh, let's all stand up and give a rousing, <laughs> warm welcome <laughs> to Lisa Sassavis. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Wow, it is an honor. I made the short list, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Christian. You're welcome. Here's how I want you to think about your offer. And be open to breakthroughs here. If you close up and say, I already know about offers, then you know, you're not going to get anything new. So the way to be listening right now is not, does this fit? But it's, you got it, how does this fit? If you ask yourself, how does this fit? And I'll show you. I, I actually... Um, <laughs> I pulled some specific examples. I got to talk to some of you, find out what businesses you're in. Specific examples so you can really see as this unfolds how it fits to you, what you're doing, both the business that you're in and the structures that you're using. So what is an offer? An offer is made up of two parts. We've got the outcome that you offer. So each one of you offers a unique outcome, a, s a transformation that you offer that's unique from anything else anyone offers. How many of you in the room, you coach in the area of mindset or belief change? Raise your hand, keep it up, everybody look around. Wow, that's like over half the room, right? This is not uncommon. But your outcome, your specific transformation that you offer in that area is worth learning how to articulate. So that if I need a mindset or belief change, I can look at the 60 people here that do that and you can articulate your outcome very specifically to me so that it's easy to choose. Kind of like a dog whistle that would blow in my ear just the right tune. Um, that's what it is to be able to articulate the transformation that you offer. So your offer is that outcome, that transformation that you offer, and it's combined with how you provide it. So some of you provide it through one-on-one -on -one coaching calls, some of you through group coaching, some of you provide it through on stage, some of you have online courses, all those different ways that you provide your service. We're going to call those service delivery. So we have a common language here. So you've got the transformation that you provide and you've got the way that you provide it, the service delivery. With me so far? Yeah. Okay. I, it helps me to have your feedback because then I know that I'm taking you along the path. I don't want to turn the corner and lose anyone. Okay. So with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, so Here's, what, here, here's how to remember it really easily. They are buying the destination, not the plane. Okay? <laughs> they are buying the destination, not the plane. So if we go back here, we go back here, you see that there's some numbers, 90% and 10%. And with that phrase in mind, now you can sort of see what do those mean. 90% means when you are speaking, when you're writing a sales page, when you're doing a teleseminar, when you're being interviewed, when you're talking to a one-on-one -on -one client, you want to focus 90% of your words, your energy, everything on what? Outcome. The outcome or the transformation, the destination. 
and only about 10% on the plane, the service delivery. Now, what are most people doing? Right? Anybody see yourself in this? We get up there and we are just talking all about the plane. Oh, yes, when you coach with me, some people give you six hours, I give you nine. We're going to have not just 60 minute sessions, there are mine are 65 minutes. Um, <laughs> my live events, we're not nine to fivers here. You get there at seven in the morning and I'm going to, you know, just, <laughs> just give you so much information until 11 p.m. I mean, you know, it's, it's not an eight hour thing, it's a 16 hour a day. And my ebook, 157 pages, pure content. Oh, and don't forget, when you buy from me today, not only do you get what I promised you, but I have this 27 hours of CDs that you'll get too, <laughs> because I know you have nothing else to do. Right? That's how you hear people selling. Anybody having an insight right now? Raise your hand. <laughs> if we stopped here, would you have already gotten some value? <laughs> so if you just make this switch and you just remember my words, and anytime you're in a situation to make your offer, you focus on that outcome. It, you will have tremendous, tremendous breakthroughs in your sales conversion, which is what we're focused on here, the queen of sales conversion, right? You want to sell more to the people you're already talking to. So if you just make this switch, you'll be sending me emails saying, Lisa, wow, it all happened in the, the first 20 minutes for me. So they're buying the destination, not the plane. And now we want to talk about, from a mindset perspective, because there's a couple things I need to shake up with you here. I can give you all these strategies, but they don't work unless that your mindset's on board. So why make an offer? You know, there's a lot of folks out there that believe I'll just give great value, give great content, you know, and people will find me when they're ready. And that, and you know, any of you like kind of ever done this, you, you either had a chance to speak or introduce yourself or talk to someone and you like, you told yourself, you know, I'm going to make that offer if it's a right fit and you kind of got up to the front of the diving board and you know, took your deep breaths and and then the time came to make an offer, and it really was right, and then you went like, well, here's my brochure. <laughs> <laughs> or, why did I follow up with you on Monday? <laughs> Anybody ever done this once or twice before? I really would love to have us have a moment here where we could transform that for you forever. And sometimes it just takes looking at it a little different, <laughs> right? Because you might be thinking that that's because you're doing something to them, right? That you're going to, and so you're going to be kind instead? What if we reversed that and you realize that it's a disservice not to make an offer? That it's really a disservice not to make an offer. And I want to show you from two perspectives what a disservice that it is. Because it may be worse than you think. And this may be just enough the next time you get to that diving board to say, you know, I'm not sparing them, I'm serving them. I'm going to make this offer because it's, what it's, it's a disservice not to. So how it deserves your clients, you know, and you, you guys are heart-centered entrepreneurs. So you're, that I know your primary motivation is to make a difference. And you're here because you realize, you know, you want to make some good money doing it too, right? Your, your value in the world is worth honoring like that, and it serves your clients to pay you, by the way. They will get better results. So it's a disservice to them because if you open up all this possibility about how it could be in the relationship or it could be how awesome it could be if they had a corporate image that was congruent, right? Or how it could be if they feng shui their home, you know, fill in the blanks. And then you don't make an irresistible offer so they can actually step through and say yes. They can actually put something in their life like a wedge to make that real. That's what your offer does, right? When they say yes, there's a, the possibility opened and then they, you make your offer and if they say yes, a wedge is now in, like you with the mastermind here with Christian, right? You've got a wedge in there to hold open. What you guys did in the last few days is you opened possibility. That's what you did. And you have a wedge now in there that you have chosen to put to hold that possibility open and make sure that there is a structure to keep it open because possibility closes. That's how it works. <coughs> Left on its own, without a wedge, it closes. All the great ideas, all the wonderful plans, without a structure, without a wedge. Johanna, you know that because we're in our, our own mastermind together. It's like, it closes. You've got to put the wedge in. And that's what you are doing. That's your job. So it's a disservice if you don't make that offer. You don't give them the chance to say, yes, you know, I can see that rebranding is really the next thing for me. And yes, let's put that wedge in. You know, here's my credit card. Now we've got a structure to make it real. Does this make sense for you guys? 
So that's the disservice you do to them if you don't make the offers. You don't give them anything to go like, yeah, you know, stick your foot in the door, hold it open. It's, it's not there. It's just a good idea, and, the, and, and it will close. It will close. But here's the thing you, that you probably don't realize that's kind of even worse, is that when you don't make irresistible offers, you don't take the time to learn the structure and just be ready with them, you deserve you. Because you are out there as the 25-year veteran, right, or the awarded expert. You are giving your knowledge. People want to pick your brain. You're giving free talks. You're giving content. You're opening possibility. You are doing the altruistic part. But the problem is, if you don't make an offer, you step aside, <coughs> and the new kid who just took the six-month online course on the internet <laughs> for your area of expertise, right? They got certified for someone how to be a relationship coach, but you've been doing it for 27 <laughs> years. The new person comes in. You already did all the heavy lifting. You opened the space. That client, that potential client knows they need help in their relationships with their children. And they just walk in, barely tap it, Right? Make an irresistible offer because you were there before. You did all the heavy lifting and <coughs> that becomes their client. You see what's happening? So when you're out there on social media opening possibility, blogging opening possibility, sending out great content opening possibility, speaking to just to give your content, you know, you are doing a really beautiful job for your competition. <laughs> Please don't shoot the messenger! <laughs> How many of you can see that this could be happening? <laughs> to you or someone you know. <laughs> so it's, I know it's kind of bad news, good news, right? Because the fix is easy. The fix is like formulaic and simple and easy. You just got to understand why it's worth fixing. 